This video workflow is going to go into a bit of depth on working with infrastructure data inside of Twinmotion. So the data I'm using today is from Autodesk Infoworks 2024. I want to export the data. I want to bring in the entire model, reuse the target coordinate system and include the textures, the objects with the same texture, and then use the tick box to make sure I'm working with the large FBX file support. Today I'm going to be using a DAE file format. So I go to the import inside of Twinmotion and then import in that DAE file. Here it turns up in the property section in the scene property section and now I have the InfoWorks data with the texture map with the modeling inside of Twinmotion. I can see here we have the parent child arrangement of that data. It's got the tiles from InfoWorks. It's got the bridge that I've designed in InfoWorks with all the decorations, all the textures that are transferred through. When I go to the ambience, I can change it from early in the morning to mid morning, and you can see clearly the quality of the data. Next, I want to have a look at some of the templates that come with the new version of Twinmotion 2023.1. I'm going to enable the HDRI environment, and down the bottom here in the media section, I have different templates to choose from. So when I refresh it, it will load in different HDRI dome environments. So this one might be the right one to use in the scene. I can go and select on exposure to maybe crank it up a little bit more. If you're interested in gamma settings, 2.2 is a good setting to use. In the HDRI environment, it's set to sky dome. So that's a dome over the model and that can be rotated to suit the background you want to see. You can swap out that HDRI. You can also choose whether you want it to affect the lighting or lock the sun to the HDRI. Also add height fog effects. So the templates are great. You can even turn on in ambience the ocean should you want to include that in the background. Next, in the material section, Twinmotion has a number of materials that you can use built in where you can drag and drop those materials onto your surfaces. So I have an asphalt material here. Within the properties of that asphalt material, I can adjust the scale, the rotation. I can adjust the normals to give it more bump. I can also, when I'm loaded, logged into Twinmotion by the Unreal Engine, I can access the Mega Services Library. This one has detailed row components that I can use. So, this Mega Scan it has a torn American style road. I can hide some of the data from InfoWorks here and then drop the roughness to get this shiny effect to give you a better idea of how that texture is looking on my, my road. Other tools here when working with materials will enable you to add illuminance to your light fixtures. So this one, if I use the eyedropper, it's going to pull in the reflective globe here. I want to use some of the neons inside of Twinmotion. So I'll drag and drop that onto the light. I can choose ones that blink, or I can choose maybe a, uh, a lower sodium type lighting effect for these lamp poles. What's great here is because these lamp poles are instanced from the InfoWorks model, it will update here across all those lamp poles in the model. And to better see this, we can go back to the ambience and change the time of day. Drop the exposure a little bit and you can see them illuminating 
uh, over the motorway there. And then for, uh, in twin motion, you have uh, tools for working with uh, populating trees, scattering trees, or painting trees on your model. Now, the scatter will do the entire section of the model. Because we're working with tiles from the InfoWorks model, we're going to use the paint tool. We're going to choose some trees that suit our site. So if I go down here and get three different types of trees that I want to paint with, I can just drag them into the paint library, adjust the diameter at the moment, default is 10 meters, so I want to crank it up to maybe 30 meters or 20 meters, and then I can paint those trees where they are on the texture map. So here's my trees. Now, to be more accurate, you can go in here and start to erase trees that maybe have painted onto certain geometry surfaces. So some here have crept across a little bit. I can go and use the erase tool, reduce the size of the diameter, and now we have trees scattered in our model. Other things you can do with the populate tool is you can create paths for vehicles, bicycles, characters. You can even do a custom one. This demo here, I've gone and created this vehicle path across the entire road. Just doing this from scratch, you can draw from point A to point B, adjust the lane count, so I could crank it up to three. I could have a two-way two -way direction. Um, I can also adjust the offset, the density, so you can have a heavily, heavily populated road here. And I can move the speed up to 100 kilometers an hour, or for this particular design roadway in Australia, 60 kilometers an hour. And we drive on the left-hand side of the road, so I'll put that in reverse. Maybe slow down the speed, just so you can see the level of detail in these vehicles. They have people animated inside them. Uh, also with vehicles, you may want to add some animated vehicles that come with the software. So here... You'll see animated suffix at the end of some of the assets here. Have a dump truck. We have a loader. The loader comes with some earth. We can drag and drop them into the model and you can see them animating already. Likewise with people. So we have these construction characters who are doing works on the bridge. They've got different settings within each worker where you have cloth color so down here you can choose different materials for their clothing you can choose the pose whether they're speaking idle sitting lying or up and dancing and then even with them the dancing settings you have four different options for dancing so it's easy to get up and running with these characters you don't have to learn character rigging and they're ready to go point and shoot inside a twin motion here we want to go a little bit further with some of the tools. So we want to uh, enable the ocean under the ambient setting. We can change it to be an Atlantic ocean and we can adjust the height of the plane. We want to add a boat here. So you have characters, bicycles and vehicles. When we add the boat, we're going to use the custom tool. So just going to loop a path here. And I want to uh, isolate it just so I can see what's going on. So I've just got the ambience and that path. And this is the custom tool. So it places a one square meter box following the path. If you navigate to the top here, that's where it displays. We can go to the library, navigate under vehicles to boats, drag and drop that boat into the cast custom path. And now it will follow that line. We can also adjust the height and the offset so it's sitting within the water and scale it up, scale it down as needed. And hopefully it will pass under our bridge. Some fine tuning needed to do that. Other really cool tools that they've added in the newer version of Twinmotion 2023.1 is 
a gravity and collision tool. So I'm just dragging and dropping some vehicles onto my bridge. And to show this, I'm going to grab those vehicles and lift them off the bridge to try and show it in a dramatic way. So we'll grab them all. They're elevated, floating, and with them now selected up in the top ribbon part of the software, if you expand those tools, you'll see there is a move a collision and a gravity. Now these are early access, but here you can see they drop down and they collide. So to use this in a sense for this particular bridge, bridge project, when I go and drop the truck on the bridge, you can see if I grab the center of that gizmo, it still won't align exactly to the curvature of the bridge. So I'll go back to the collision and gravity and drop it, and now it aligns a bit better with the curvature of the grid of the bridge. So that's where I find this can be a really handy tool. Once we've gone through this process and we've created our site, done the materials, done the vehicle paths, we can then create a story. Now, for this particular storyboard of video output, I've actually turned the statistics down. Uh, if the models get big and you need to navigate through the model just to create your storyboard, you can drop these settings down. I just wanted to see the textures. Everything else can be low because I want more speed and navigating around to capture the keyframes for my video output. Simply to do this, you'll add the video. You can move along the model to create the second frame or the second point that you want to get to. You can adjust the length to say 20 seconds and then that camera will follow that linear path. If you need to make adjustments, you can uh, adjust say the height so we want this to drop down. Hit refresh with that last snapshot and hit play and that camera path will follow along and then drop down. Here we next go to export. I'm gonna have all the high settings. Again, they're not showing in the viewport, but they are gonna show up in my export. MP4 for my output. Choose the video you want. You can choose them all or just one. And then let that run. And now we have a video to export to our folder and that will give us a 20 second animation following that linear path. So that was the final result using those workflows. Hopefully this can help enable you with your journey of working with InfoWorks data inside of the new Twinmotion 2023.1 engine.